Hi, I'm George from EGW. Uh, Mark Krebs agreed to let us make his beaver tail fixture. We made it for him before, but we're gonna make it and sell it directly. So uh, let's try one in the machine and see how it works out. So we get in the middle of the vise so it holds better. Um, when, if you're on the edge, it would, could be tippy and not hold as well. Get in, centered it. We're gonna come over, find out where the Y is to go into the fixture. Gently bring your end mill down, not running. Fine, we're in the hole, we'll zero out our Y. So we're gonna go down to the bottom and touch. And then we're gonna come up 10 thousandths off the bottom so it doesn't touch the fixture. Good, great. That's out of the way. Um, we're gonna come over, take our frame, we're gonna put a spacer in. So when we tighten it up, it doesn't um, squeeze the frame. We're gonna put a drip of oil on each side. So when we spin it, it doesn't call metal on metal because we're gonna put a little tension on it so the end mill doesn't shatter. Put that in, put that in the fixture, drop our pin in. Line the, the disc up. The hole in the disc is bigger, so it fits in easily, as you can see. Great. All right, then we came up with a disc to put on top of the pin. This is 510 or like a 255 radius as a starting point. We'll bring the end mill over. Again, not running. We're just gonna go up and down until it see it move. So we just touched the plate. All right, so we know where we are. We're gonna X zero on that. So that's where our disc is. So that's our finish of our cut. We're gonna bring the frame, um, we're gonna set the tension. So right now I can feel it. It's a little free up and down. So we're gonna take this, we change this so we can do this with the frame in place. We'll turn this and just wiggle it until we feel tension on the frame so it doesn't bounce up and down. drag feels great also have a set screw so we can cinch that so the set screw doesn't let the screw turn while we're running boom all right we come to all the way around now we go in and all the way at the edge of the fixture we're gonna plunge in again not running so we don't mill holes in our fixture cool we go down we're gonna Cinch our quill, touch the frame so it doesn't move around. We're gonna go on. We're gonna go 500 RPMs. Now this frame isn't cut at all, so it's gonna probably have a touch at the tip of the ears on the first cut. There we go. So this is a full, full tang 1911 frame. So that's a, a start of our cut. We go over 10 thousandths at a time. I'm just putting weight on my hand so it doesn't it doesn't bounce around but it's not I'm not having just for demo we can just do here's it's not I don't, I don't have to hold it hard I'm just putting it for so the cutter lasts longer it doesn't bounce around as a, a damper 60 you can see how clean how fast and then the beauty is we go to do the next one it's all set up and we just go right to the same place do the same with 50 thousandths away, 40 thousandths away, 30 thousandths away. Twenty. I'm not sure how much time that was, but probably two minutes to cut a 1911 frame tang and give you an excellent head start. 10 thousandths away. Mm. I'm just gonna go back slow so it doesn't mark it up. Great. Kill it off. Bring our quill out. 
And we have all our numbers on our rehab. We go right back to it. So we'll bring this over. We're gonna crack our set screw loose. Boom. We're gonna unscrew our holder so it's free. I'm gonna stick a 50 thousandths Allen wrench in the pin, pull out the pin. Now here's the fun part. So we take our beaver tail, drop it in, and you can see where we are for a starting point. Radius is matched on both sides. Both sides are touching, and you can see through the hole, maybe, on one of the cameras. Um, the pro tip would be, you're gonna use your beaver tail, or your thumb safety pin, it's gonna be 153. Um, probably won't fit, so you start with a Drill bit, it's about 145 thousandths. Put it in the hole, sharpie the surface, put it in, wiggle it back and forth. One side or the other side might be a little high. F uh, file it down just to finish off. But for your starting point, you're in in two minutes. What's for fun? It's all set up. Let's see how long it takes to do a second one. You have a, a watch act? Let's see what this is. So we'll, we'll blow off the fixture. Because the cool part would be if you're doing more than one frame. So blow this off, we already have our settings. Put our frame in, put our pin in. Oh, we put our spacer in. Put our spacer in, this is a Colt frame, Commander. Put it in, put our pin in. Find the hole. Boom, cool. Swing it around. Find our tension. Great. Okay. So we're gonna come over to fit in the fixture. Check that we do. Cool. Turn on. Down to depth. All right, Zach, so you gotta watch on how much time. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna mill over to find it. Commander doesn't have as long a tang, so we're gonna mill over just to find it. Just touch sixty up there is fifty thousand. So we'll start at forty. Boom. It's a uh, four flute carbide, uh, 7 8 length of cut end mill, not a high helix, just normal helix. And zero. Boom. Perfect. All right, what do you got, Zach? <laughs> that's awesome. So in one minute, we cut the second frame. All right, well, that's cool. That was, that was under a minute. So let's... Uh, Let's see how we pull this apart and see how it goes. So you take our pin out. Of course it helps if we can see the pin. There we go. Perfect. Pin out, and then just take our spacer, pop it out so we didn't crush our frame. We'll put this in, we'll just see where we get. Again, starting point. You have to grind your tangs and your sides, but your radiuses are cut in. You can see through the hole, you see about 10 thousandths of shadow on the front of the hole and the beaver tail. Um, both sides are touching. It's an excellent head start. And you also, you can see you have amazing finish from an end mill and true and even on both sides. Thanks guys, thanks for watching.